Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. Now before we get started, I feel like I should mention I've read Gone Girl, I haven't read any of her other books, and I didn't like Gone Girl. I didn't think much of it, and I thought it was super overhyped as well. It was okay, but it wasn't great, and I didn't like the characters in that book. Um, I just found them very difficult to engage with. So when I picked up this book and I started going into it, I wasn't feeling very confident, if you know what I mean. I wasn't sure that I was going to enjoy it or not. I thought, if I didn't enjoy it, well, at least I gave her another chance. I did enjoy it, so that's good. I feel like, I feel happy now. I'm like, I, I don't know, It's you know when there's an author that's kind of really popular and you don't like them and you're just like, I don't understand what, the, what all the fuss is about. I feel like I kind of understand now. <laughs> so I, I might even go back and read some of her other books, but probably, if I'm honest, only if I see them in charity shops. The Grown Up is an Edgar Award winning short story. It was actually first published in a George R.R. R. Martin anthology called... Uh, it was called the Rogues Anthology and the story was called What Do You Do? And what was actually really cool is that right at the end where you kind of write your thanks or whatever, your acknowledgements, she acknowledged George R.R. R. Martin. She said, and I quote, Thanks to George R.R. R. Martin, who asked me to write him a story. It's a pretty good story. I mean, I think part of the reason that I do like it is that it is a short story. I think maybe I just don't like her longer form work as much. I thought it worked really well as a short story. I'm going to read you the blurb. A young woman is making a living, faking it as a cut price psychic with some illegal softcore sex work on the side. She gives people hand jobs. She makes a decent wage mostly by telling people what they want to hear, but then she meets Susan Burke. I'm not going to read the rest of the blurb, but basically from there she kind of begins this friendship with Susan Burke and she goes to Mrs. Burke's house and there's kind of a haunted house vibe to it, but equally with it being Gillian Flynn, not everything is as it seems. I don't want to say any more because I don't want to spoil the story. What I did do is I took some notes throughout on my little bookmarky sticky post-it notes. One of the first things that I noticed was this, that it's very believable. It's written in first person and told from a narrator's point of view, but straight away you get a sense of this narrator's character and that stays with it throughout. And I think in Gone Girl, the problem that I had with that is that the voices of the characters weren't very unique. They didn't really stand out from each other, whereas straight away, as soon as you start reading this one, you start to get a feel for the character. I'm going to read the first couple of paragraphs. This is a cracking opening two lines as well. I didn't stop giving hand jobs because I wasn't good at it. I stopped giving hand jobs because I was the best at it. For three years, I gave the best hand job in the tri-state area. The key is to not overthink it. If you start worrying about technique, if you begin analysing rhythm and pressure, you lose the essential nature of the act. You have to mentally prepare beforehand, and then you have to stop thinking and trust your body to take over. Basically, it's like a golf swing. I jacked men off six days a week, eight hours a day, with a break for lunch, and I was always fully booked. I took two weeks of vacation every year, and I never worked holidays, because holiday hand jobs are sad for everyone. So over three years, I'm estimating that comes to about 23,546 hand jobs. So don't listen to that bitch Shardell when she says I quit because I didn't have the talent. So straight away, I was pretty impressed by the kind of the voice, the strong voice of this narrator. Yeah, I've got here. This is page five I put this note in and I put, I already care more than I cared about the Gone Girl characters. What I quite like actually about putting these notes throughout is that you can, I can kind of see my mounting excitement. The more I got into the book, the more I was like, this is cool. This is cool. They share books. She actually shares books with one of her clients. So she's lent him the woman in Hill House and she's also lending him the woman in white as well. That actually comes back into play later on in the book as like a literary device as well. But um, Well, as a plot device, not a literary device. I'm just trying to sound clever. Later on as well, they mention uh, Turn of the Screw, which was cool. There's a growing sense of dread throughout it, which kind of reminds me of Turn of the Screw. I'm sure that's... I'm not sure whether that's a deliberate tribute to the turn of the shrew or whether it's just that it's really well written and that so is the turn of the screw but there is this palpable sense of dread and it achieves so much for what 60 odd 65 pages i think the story is so we've got here this is this is when i found out about one of the twists and i've put twist work well yay and yeah this is the thing that i deliberately am trying not to tell you about because I don't want to spoil you. equally i don't like it though when people go into books expecting twists and turns i think you know I think that's a weird thing to want. Like, how can you want a surprise? Then it's not a surprise. Like, it's just really weird. It's like, oh, surprising. The surprise arrived. That's not surprising. Then, as well, what was cool with the ending is actually there are, like, two twists. But actually, this second twist was good. Because if the first twist is the truth, 
it does kind of turn it a little bit into Gongo, and I don't like the implications it has for one of the characters in it. But equally, you actually kind of get to choose which of these two twists is the truth. Now, what did happen is that the character herself kind of decided not to choose either of those endings. So she was just like, I'm just going to roll with it and not have to confront that issue, which is kind of fine. But equally, I think if it had, if it had ended four pages before that and not told us what she chose to do as well, I think that would have been even better because it would have been it would have been two different cliffhangers not cliffhangers i don't want to say cliffhangers because that implies you'll get a resolution but um these kind of vague endings adaptive endings that you as the reader can make a decision on i think it's really cool when authors do that and you do get that to that a certain extent because you never explicitly find out these are which of the two truths is the true truth but at the same time i think it would have been better if We'd also not seen the way that the character resolves with that, so that we're then also left wondering, well, which one did the character choose to believe in? So the fact that we are told, basically, that the character doesn't choose either of these things, they just don't... I guess they don't care what the truth is. Still, though, I mean, this has got vibes of all different things. It's kind of a contemporary thriller. It's got some supernatural elements in it as well. And um, I think it worked really well. For such a short story, I'm impressed. Also, I'm not sure if this happens with every copy, but my copy came with an excerpt of Dark Places, which I'm not going to read because I don't like reading excerpts. I don't like then feeling as though I've read part of a story. So I probably will read. In fact, let me know, should I read any more Gillian Flynn? And if so, I see she has Sharp Objects and Dark Places. Those are the other two. So if either of those, if you think either of those are kind of similar to this in vibes or if you think I should just read them, let me know with a comment to let me know why. And so I guess that brings me to the rating. Now I've actually done pretty well because I've talked for 10 minutes about a 60 odd page book. It's not even really a novella, it's a short story. However, it is very good. And uh, I'm going to give this a solid four out of five. I was impressed. And it's done a lot to make me reconsider my preconceptions, I guess, of Gillian Flynn. I, like I say, I have read Gone Girl and I didn't like it. I don't think I'll ever reread Gone Girl. But it's also possible that the reason that I didn't like it is because I was a bit late to the party and it was overhyped. And I've seen people kind of do Gone Girl rip-offs and all of this stuff. So, I don't know. The uh, My verdict is still open on Gillian Flynn. Maybe she's not that bad after all. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this review and or of the book with a comment. And I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.